perhaps we need to move on to our next um, topic, which was credibility, something very close to every PR person's heart. So I'm not sure that you know who determines what it means is necessarily um, a, a, a question exclusively for new media, um, but it is interesting. Um, that you know, we're talking about the ability to build credibility over time. Um, blogging is like talking to your neighbour rather than a sales pitch, and I think that was that supports um, the comments that were made earlier about the need for authenticity and so on. And of course, to find the audience and the communicator. But is that so different online? How can you build credibility, um, and how do you know um, when? when you've reached some kind of critical mass in the never-ending growth of the blogosphere in particular, I guess? Well, credibility is very hard to earn, very easy to lose, and I think we're entering an era when accountability is far greater and it's heightened. Because online, you can't hide behind um, you know, something that just people can't find. It's there, it's published, it's online, and you can't retract it. Um, that wasn't the way. You know, you, things that are in back issues, not easy to find, people can't pull them out at the right moment. But today, if you go and print with something and it's online, someone will pull it out and hold it back. That changes the way people write online because they know they are accountable. It's very easy. So I think um, the notion of online being less accountable or sort of somehow being less credible is actually totally the opposite. It's, it's quite um, it's important to be authentic because you get called out on it otherwise. How does our audience feel about that? Do you, do, do you agree? Do you disagree? Does anyone have a comment? Yeah, and I guess it was the way I, I phrased it. Um, I guess what I meant uh, when I said that was that I don't really, I, I think it's important that you don't have the corporate, you know, book. And so, you know, you've got to, well, we better speak this way if we're going to speak from a corporate point of view. Because then it, it, it's all, yeah, corporate speak and stuff like that. So, um, so yes, I agree, but they, they want to hear it in, in real words, right? They want to hear the people, the, the voice of people coming through um, uh, when, when people are speaking like that. So, yeah, I, I mean, I agree. I just said it in a, a kind of mildly inflammatory way, I suppose. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's the point I was trying to make earlier this morning, and that you know, and why we have such a great opportunity here as PR professionals to listen and to be bringing problems about product services, customer service issues, um, vendor relationships, all of that back to our organizations at the highest level, because there is no disconnect now between the messages that were out there. Um, spinning basically and the products and services that we offer because they will immediately be talked about in the negative and you can't correct poor product poor service um, with with messaging so what we have to be doing is listening to what our customers are saying not only about what we're currently offering but also about what they want and so when they're saying you know we want a way to engage with the brand we want a way to tell you about the enhancements that we want you to make uh, we need to be listening first and gaining credibility. The very first step is listening. So. Thank you. Okay, staying on top. Yes, it might go away. I think that message has come through quite loud and clear. Busyness is an excuse. Busyness is an excuse. Um, it requires a different mindset um, and an ongoing commitment and a need for skilled people. What do you think, panel? Is it is it does it need skilled people, and does it require a different change in mindset to stay on top? I think it requires an understanding of a new tool, but you can't just bring in someone who understands a new tool and doesn't understand how to communicate. So, communications professionals, journalists, everyone needs to start to understand how to use the new tools of communication. <coughs> then it's effective. Richard, can I just perhaps interrupt here and say, did you have any? Um, sorry, Richard Barrett, did you have any issues dealing with your senior management in terms of using new media and breaking new ground in your organisation? Uh, yes, um, particularly the IT area because firstly we had to get access ourselves within the communication team to Facebook, MySpace, streaming video and all the rest of it. Um, luckily our CEO is very supportive and he was actually here this morning and was listening to Jennifer and said, oh, yeah, well we've got to have a talk about all this later on. So. Um, there was a little bit at the start, but I think as they saw, and even not just um, the Facebook and the MySpace, but that whole campaign was really uh, leading the way for us and, and was doing something really new, and particularly all the stuff that Oren's doing in, in, in Transperth. It, you know, I think we were at the forefront. We were able to um, sort of, I guess, break down the barriers to start with, and now they're happy and they're along with the ride and they're excited about it, and they're on board and they're advocates as much as anyone else. So. That's fantastic. Do you have any questions, please? Um, not sort of a dedicated resource, we've got one person who um, has been responsible for uploading the videos, the photos and, and engaging with when we get messages responding and I guess she, in this, I, asked, I actually asked her this question on Friday, how much time did you put into it to start with and she said, oh, you know, the first week was quite intense, trying to find the kids, particularly on MySpace because the kids all have nicknames or aliases, it was really hard to track them down to actually add them to the page, um, but now it's just maintaining, I think it's just like anything else, as long as you're um, continually uh, checking and, and updating it, I think it's it's fine. So once you break the back, I think it's fine. So, sorry, no, you just got to keep going. Absolutely. For that particular campaign, oh, for that person, probably probably ten percent, fifteen percent. So not huge for the outcomes that we've we're seeing. And so, um, yeah, absolutely. Well, because the kids wouldn't have cared, they wouldn't read the papers, they wouldn't know about it, and we wouldn't be getting the traction in the community with the kids that we're currently getting. And as Jennifer said, perhaps we would be getting tagging on the walls, which is which was what our first um, objective was. Thank you. Okay, so we've kind of preempted some of the last slide, and maybe that's good because we're almost out of time. But 